Hey there, and thanks for tuning in. This is A Brief History of the Formation of the Free Methodist Church, and I'm Scott Brudd. In order to understand Free Methodism and its history, you first need to know John Wesley. Born in 1703, Wesley grew up in the Church of England, was ordained as a deacon, preached sermons at Oxford, and even served as a missionary in the state of Georgia, yet was captive to a legalism that defined much of his ministry and clouded his understanding of the gospel. Thanks to a meeting with Peter Bowler, a missionary heading to Georgia, Wesley heard the gospel of salvation by faith alone, and Bowler supplied him with both scriptural and empirical evidence of this. This was the kindling God used to spark Wesley's faith at the Aldersgate Street meeting. On May 24, 1738, against his own will, Wesley attended a small group gathering where, that night, they were reading through reformer Martin Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans. Luther described the change God works in the heart through faith in Christ. And as Wesley heard Luther's words, he felt his heart glow with the warmth of faith that finally did trust in Jesus Christ alone for his salvation. Wesley was transformed, abandoning a lifestyle of legalism and righteousness secured by behavior modification. Wesley also abandoned his views of high church ecclesiology and brought the gospel of grace to the streets. This inevitably led to the birth of Methodism. In working to establish the witness and reach of Methodism, John Wesley and many others entered into prisons and preached the gospel to convicts where many were saved and baptized in the name of Jesus. Wesley began to even preach in open fields near Bristol just a year after the Aldersgate experiences. It was here that they would use the printed page, the most revolutionary piece of technology yet, where they could print God's word, they could sing hymns together, many of which were composed by John's younger brother, Charles. And then they would also organize these new believers into bands and classes and societies, all of which emphasizing the personal discipline that holds to a methodical approach to the study and application of scripture to the individual life. Now the Methodist movement exploded so quickly because of these efforts that by the end of John Wesley's life in 1791, Methodism boasted over 76,000 members. With the Americas winning their independence, John Wesley believed American Methodists should establish their own church, which opened the doorway to the Methodist Episcopal Church. It was in 1784 that the Methodist Episcopal Church was organized under the superintendency of Thomas Koch, where an American Methodism agreed to adopt both organizationally and individually the Wesleyan pattern of doctrine and discipline. This new denomination grew under the leadership of Francis Asbury as they sent circuit riders throughout the newfound nation and they established annual conferences to organize the growth. Its first general conference was held in 1808. Unfortunately, several divisions ensued in the years to follow over matters of bishop authority, district superintendents, lay representation, and eventually slavery. It was into this environment that Benjamin Titus Roberts entered the scene. In the late 1940s, at Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, the city and the school both experienced a Methodist revival under the preaching of John Wesley Redfield, a local medical doctor and preacher. One student who was particularly stirred in this revival was B.T. Roberts. Roberts had earlier been converted at an event that turned him from the study of law when he was nearly ready for admission to the bar to preparation for Christian ministry, hence his studies at Wesleyan University. When faced with the decision between the pastorate or Christian education, upon his graduation in 1848, at 26 years old, Roberts joined the Genesee Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church. It was in 1852 that Bishop Morris ordained B.T. Roberts as an elder and then appointed him to Niagara Street, a central church of the district. It was during this appointment where principles which had firmly been established in Roberts' mind and conscience began to clash with current controversial matters in the Methodist Episcopal Church. And the list of issues in the Methodist Episcopal Church was quite extensive. Of first importance was the matter of doctrine. 
Wesley had preached that believers are wholly sanctified not by the coming of death nor by the accumulation of good works, but by an act of faith in the redeeming God. Some Methodist clergy began opposing such a belief, stating that entire sanctification is received upon the moment of justification. Secret societies was another matter. Many clergymen in the Genesee Conference had secret memberships in secret societies such as the Odd Fellows or Masons. These men banded together to influence conference votes, intimidate younger members of the conference, and manipulate appointments of other elders in the conference. Foundational Wesleyan theology taught such a practice of slavery was inconsistent with Christianity. Yet the Methodist Episcopal Church's stance on the gospel issue became ambiguous, such that thousands of its members held slaves. The conservative sect of clergy was uncompromising on anti-slavery doctrines, while the secret societies strongly opposed. The rental of pews excluded the poor and gave preference to the rich. This became a general practice in American churches, particularly in the Genesee Conference. This practice elevated the wealthy to higher positions of favor while discriminating against the poor. And finally, worldliness was rampant. Christian devotion waned along with Christian giving. Churches began fundraising for support through events, eventually leading to activities such as card parties, dances, and drinking parties. The belief that the church would grow through such means as these permeated the conference. And in response to these weighty matters, B.T. Roberts penned a treaty titled New School Methodism, in which he argued that Methodism had split into an old school and new school. He warned that if the new school were to generally prevail, then the glory will depart from Methodism. The article was brought to the attention of conference leadership who put Roberts on trial, convicted him, and reproved him for his actions. After the article was published again without his consent, Roberts was charged with unchristian and immoral conduct, and as a result, Roberts was declared expelled from the Genesee Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church. Now he and sympathizing clergymen and laymen appealed the case to the General Conference. Before this conference, these dissenters passed a resolution declaring their devotion to their church and unwillingness to secede due to their commitment to Methodism. However, the General Conference denied their appeal and their expulsion was finalized. Due to their commitment to Methodism, Roberts and the expelled clergymen and lay leaders convened in Pekin, New York, on August 23, 1860, the result of which was the formation of a new denomination, the Free Methodist Church. This new denomination was to be marked by four main freedoms. First, freedom from slavery. This Methodism was committed to its abolition based on its firm stance on scripture. Freedom from secret societies. Christ Jesus and his church holds his people's primary loyalties. Free seats in all churches. All are welcome to come, no matter the race, gender, or social status. And finally, the freedom of the spirit in worship. Worship wouldn't have to be constrained by certain liturgies or behaviors. Additionally, this newfound Free Methodist Church reaffirmed its commitment to the doctrines and usages of primitive Methodism, including the witness of the spirit and entire sanctification, and an equal representation of ministers and lay members in all of the councils of the church. And over a century and a half later, the Free Methodist Church still stands on these principles with its strong commitment to love God, love people, and make disciples of all nations. And this is the brief history of the Free Methodist Church. <laughs>